an American analyst, William Glasser, has a great phrase that he uses about the classroom. He teaches students the art of looking on. When something's going wrong, look at it and ask yourself the question, how did I get here and what's the route out? You're trying all the time to maintain your analytic brain. We can't always change our behaviour on the spot, but the great single truth about the classroom is that the most important influence in the classroom is the behaviour and activities of the teacher, of us. When we start teaching, we're going to be assaulted by all sorts of primitive instincts. There'll be children we don't like. There'll be children we think are humiliating us. There'll be children we think that are just impossible to get through to. We're not going to feel that way in six months' time or a year's time. We'll know them. We'll understand how they tick. Uh, we'll have affection for children who might have driven us mad initially. We've got to know and recognise those primitive feelings, but we have to remember that it's us that determines what happens in the classroom. And in fact, it's us that's largely determining the behaviour that the children manifest towards us in the classroom. I learned this from Lee Cantor, uh, who was the guy who codified assertive discipline. He said that when he does mentoring, he can get any class to behave uh, within about five minutes by following uh, the, this method. He explains to the teacher he's mentoring, he's going to use a signalling system. If he holds up one finger, it means you haven't made your expectations clear. If he holds up two fingers, it means they know what you want to do and some of them are doing it and you're not letting them know you've done the right thing. When he holds up three fingers, it means there are some children floating off task and you need to get them back on task. And then when he holds up four fingers, it means you've threatened a sanction and now it's time to give it out. What's interesting about that story is that by working in a classroom in that way, you can change the adult's behaviour and the minute the adult's behaviour changes, the children's behaviour changes quickly. I think the best single piece of advice I can give about behaviour management in any classroom, anywhere, is go out and buy yourself a small um, digital voice recorder uh, and listen to yourself. Are your directions clear? Are you being re sufficiently rewarding? Are you redirecting children who are off task? And do you follow uh, up when you've um, issued warnings? Every time you give an instruction, you acknowledge three students who are doing the right thing right away. You're giving a command and you're saying, thank you very much, thank you very much, thank you very much. You give out anything up to 100 commands in a lesson. That means if you use this technique, uh, you're giving out about 300 positives in a lesson. You're raising the general atmosphere. You're cheering yourself up. You're giving children recognition. On our first day in a classroom, we're likely to be able to do a little more than explain our name and maybe give our five golden expectations or our three golden expectations for the classroom and ask children uh, if they want any points of clarification about them. If, if you're in a Bash Street school where you're being overrun and you feel you can't even make the space to give those explanations, then you need help and you need someone to come in and give those explanations with you. And that idea of using two or three adults at the front of a class when all else fails to give the explanations is a very powerful one. If I wanted to give advice about how to work with a challenging class, I would say look very carefully at your lesson plans for the next three lessons and plan them out in the minutest detail. Make sure you know what you're doing every minute of the lesson because what children most respect is a well-organised adult in the classroom.